Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We commence in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All his companions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his entire household and may he bless every one of us. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, yesterday we were going through verses of Surah Al-Isra where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of Al-Hikmah and the wisdom that he has revealed. And we made mention of so many beautiful points and we had ended at the point where I made mention of the estate and the fact that when a person passes away, those who are the heirs or those who are the executors of the will should not delay to execute that particular will because it is important for us to know that that wealth now belongs to someone else. The sooner you get it to the other people, the sooner you will be absolved of that particular duty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. Shaitan will come to us. He will tell us this property is now tied in a building. This property is tied in an investment. Perhaps this wealth is tied in this way or that way. My brothers and sisters, even if you need to unblock or unlock that wealth within reasonable limits, you will have to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be reasonable. When I say reasonable, let's not be unreasonable in the sense that if there is something and we are actually making a big noise just because of a very, very small amount in order to break something huge, rather we bear a little bit of patience even though we may have a little right in that particular piece of property. I do know that ultimately what belongs to us belongs to us. But we need to understand that in order to be able to distribute things in a way that would result in the harmony and the peace between those who are heirs, who would generally be family members, it's important for us to be a little bit patient. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and ease. Thereafter, Allah makes mention of fulfilling the promise. Many of us make promises we don't fulfill. One of the promises we don't fulfill is a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We declare the shahada. We declare, we bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. But guess what? We end up worshiping wealth. We end up worshiping the powerful. We end up worshiping so many other things. We end up doing wrong things in order to please our wives, our children, and sometimes even to please those whom perhaps it is haram to have a relationship with such as girlfriends or boyfriends, etc. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability to understand. Going back to the promises that are made, brothers and sisters, the tongue of a mu'min should be sufficient for the undertaking by that particular believer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restore for us the dignity, the honesty, the trustworthiness that we had at one stage. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in verse number 35 of Surah Al-Isra. وَأَوْفُوا الْكَيْلَ إِذَا كِلْتُمْ وَزِنُوا بِالْقِسْطَاسِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ When you are weighing, you better weigh correctly, justly. Make sure you do not shortchange people. These verses are connected to cheating in business, shortchanging people. When you are selling something, be open, be clear. When you are buying something, be open, be clear. When you are dealing and trading, make sure everything is transparent and everything is clear. That is how you will save yourselves from dispute and you will save yourselves from the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith says, فَإِن كَذَبَ وَكَتَمَ مُحِقَتْ بَرَكَةُ بَيْعِهِمَا The buyer and the seller, if they lie to each other or they deceive or cheat or hide something important from each other, then the baraka and the blessings of that deal will be snatched away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us blessings in our deals. Then in verse number 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that we are responsible for what we say. We are indeed answerable for every utterance of ours. Never ever speak without sound knowledge. If you don't know, say, I don't know. If it is to do with the knowledge of the deen, it is even more important. If it is to do with the dignity and honor of a fellow human being, it is absolutely important. The reason is when you damage the dignity, reputation or honor of a fellow human being, that person will hold you responsible on the day of judgment. They may not forgive you. And as a result, you may have to pay them with the currency of the day. And what is the currency of the day of judgment? Not dollars, not pounds, not rands. 
not gold, not silver. Deeds, your deeds. You've done so many good deeds. Now you need to pay with those good deeds to those whom you have wronged, you oppressed, you spread rumor about, etc. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us. Allah warns us regarding saying that without knowledge. We don't have the knowledge regarding something. Don't even go in that direction. You'd rather learn about it. You'd rather find out about it before you speak, before you get there, before you involve in it, before you actually swim in that which is territory that is prohibited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant us protection and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. This is why Allah ends that verse by saying, indeed, you the faculty of hearing and the faculty of sight and your heart. We will question every faculty. We will make sure you are answerable for everything. What you looked at, what you heard and even your intentions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our intentions. My brothers and sisters, I pause for a moment. When a person intends to do a good deed and does not do it, they get a reward for the good intention. Subhanallah. When a person that intends doing a good deed and they do it, they get a double reward. One for the intention and one for the deed. When a person intends to do something bad and they don't do it, they get a reward for having stayed away and gone against a bad intention. And when a person intends to do something bad and they do it, they get one sin next to their name. Look at the mercy of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that mankind sometimes will want to do things, but he cannot. You know, there is a hadith speaking about envying someone in a permissible way. Not that you want to see what they have being destroyed, but you tell yourself when you see two categories of people for Allah to increase their wealth and their knowledge. And had you been given that wealth and that knowledge, you would have spent it in the right cause. This is what Muhammad sallallahu says. So when you see a knowledgeable or a wealthy person and they are doing good with that knowledge and you say, Oh Allah, had you given me this knowledge, I wish, I hope that you give me this knowledge. Not that I want it from this person to be taken away. No, but Ya Allah, grant me. If you grant me, I will spend it in the right path. And if you grant me that knowledge, I will make sure I put it into practice and convey it to others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be envious in the right way. Remember what I've just said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The English language sometimes does not have words to translate the Arabic. In the Arabic language, hasad is something bad, but al ghibta is something good, although it is a type of jealousy without wanting it to go from the person you are being jealous of, should I say, meaning the person you are looking at and wishing to have what they had. I don't want it to go. Oh Allah, increase that person. Let them have more. But Ya Allah, if you give me a bit of this, I will be grateful. Subhanallah. It's called al ghibta To wish for that which is good and to wish for increase for the person it is in and for yourself as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then reminds us regarding this wisdom. It is wise, my brothers and sisters, for us, to walk with humility, to be humble, not to walk with haughtiness and arrogance. When we walk, a lot of us have a chip on our shoulders. We only greet those who are wealthy, those who are powerful, those who are influential, those who are famous, etc., etc., all those whom we know. No, you are supposed to be humble, greet everyone, help as many as you can. Go out and reach out to the non Muslims as well. They need to see the beauty of Islam. How many at the time of Muhammad وسلم, were touched solely by his character and conduct and turned to the deen. How many later on have converted entire regions only through their uprightness and their correct business dealings, correct character and conduct. Look at Far East Asia. I'm sure you will agree that a lot of those who accepted Islam at the time, Indonesia, Malaysia, etc., through the businessmen who had gone there to do business. They were upright. They were Muslimin. People saw them. They dealt with them. They realized this is the deen we want to follow. So Allah says, Do not tread the earth with haughtiness, arrogance, etc., etc. Those bad qualities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. These are some of the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made mention of. And he says, 
ما أوحى إليك ربك من الحكمة that is which Allah has revealed to you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the wisdom from the hikmah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all brothers and sisters we hear the verses of the Quran and I'm sure they have an impact on us why do they have an impact on us? There are various types of impacts that the Quran will have on you. If you are a believer, it will impact upon you on the highest level. And if you're not a believer, it will have an effect on you, but not on the highest level. There will be a barrier between you and that particular message because you don't believe. Your heart is not softened. You're not reading or you're not looking at it with the correct heart. Allah says those who are in search of guidance, we will always guide them. Never does Allah not guide one who is truly, genuinely in search of guidance. Remember this. Allah says, those who strive and struggle to come close to us, we will guide them. We will open the paths that lead to us. We will open the paths of guidance for them. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance. However, there are people whom, when the Prophet ﷺ used to read the Quran, there was literally a curtain between the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam's reading and them because they didn't believe in Allah. They didn't believe in the hereafter. They didn't believe that there was a, there was a day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would question them. They didn't believe that. So as a result, they were not impacted by this powerful message. Allah says, verse number 46 of Surah Al-Isra. وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ حِجَابًا حِجَابًا مَسْتُورًا And indeed, when you read the Quran, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we created a barrier between you and those who don't believe in the hereafter. So there is a curtain between you. They are not affected or impacted in the correct way by that message. Because they don't believe, they're not interested in belief. They are too entrenched in their ways and habits of this earth. They think they will live forever. They think goodness and happiness is solely and only to do with this earth. That's why none of us can be happy with the material condition that we are in unless we have faith in Allah. If you don't have faith in Allah, you can have a mountain of gold. You will want another one. You can have two mountains of gold. You will want a third one. That's what disbelief in gratitude leads you to do. This is why my brothers and sisters, all of us, myself included, when you are hoping for something in terms of materialistic items, say you are saying, Oh Allah, if you gave me X amount, for example, I'd be so grateful, etc. Perhaps, you know, I might be able to retire. I might be able to this and that. Let me give you an example, not my own example, but just an example of a random example. A person says, Oh Allah, if I get 100 million rands, that's it. I can settle down. I'll stop working. I'll dedicate my life for you and I'll retire. I promise you when they get to 100 million, the figure is going to increase. The figure will increase. It will now go to a billion. Oh Allah, a billion nearby. When you get to a billion, it goes to two billion. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't stop until you suddenly drop into the grave. Allahu Akbar. That's a fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us, be happy with what you have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you in so many ways. Believe in the hereafter. Prepare for the hereafter in the same way that you prepare for this world. Let me give you an example. Many of us, we don't own homes. So it's our dream to own a home. And sometimes you, you, you have a dream even after you own a home that I'd like to renovate it, to rebuild it, to have a home where I'm going to have so many rooms and so many wives and so many children, etc. Keep on dreaming, my brothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. You know why I said that, don't you? Well, dreams do come true, my brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something. When Allah blesses you with that, you work towards it. You work hard to achieve it. You start earning, you start saving, you start making sure you will go, you will make a plan, you will buy a property, you will go and spend, you will spend sleepless nights, a year, two years, building, renovating, doing this, doing that. And even after you've built and shifted into the five-star home, every few years, you have to renovate, you have to update, you have to upgrade, etc., etc. Why? Because you have to live in that house for a few years. A few years why don't you concentrate equally upon the house of the hereafter you are supposed to be concentrating more on the house of the hereafter because you are going to live in there longer subhanallah 
Remember, even if you've lived under a tree in this world, Allah says you still have a chance of going into paradise and having the greatest castles there. Subhanallah. And even if you've lived in a bungalow here, you may never ever see any form of home in the hereafter besides that of doom. May Allah not do that to us. The point I'm raising, save yourselves, my brothers and sisters, by preparing also for the house and the home that you would like to have in the hereafter that is everlasting. Many people take loans. I don't want to speak about halal or haram. I want to speak about the dedication with which we pay back that loan every month for 10 to 20 years. We try our best. We make a plan. We do this. We do that. Why? I need to pay the loan. Allah says, your house, you want it to be in the akhirah. You need to pay. How? Five times a day. Allahu Akbar. You miss one payment. Oh, there's going to be a problem here. You better go back, repent. You better make your salah. You better make your qada. You better ask Allah to forgive you. Allah is so great. You know, at the bank, when you miss a payment, they increase the amount with Allah. If you've missed a salah, you seek forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe it out. Yes, you will have to do the qada. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us his mercy. Look at these beautiful verses. Then my brothers and sisters, many of us don't know how to speak. Anything that comes to our tongues, we utter it. We say it without considering the feelings of the people we are talking to. We do not think, but Allah has given you not only a tongue. Over and above that tongue is given you a brain. Even the animals have tongues. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a brain. That's why Allah says the worst sound is that of a braying ass, a braying donkey, subhanallah. Because it makes a noise, it does not get its message across. No one knows what's wrong with it. It keeps on making a loud sound, etc., etc. Some human beings are just like that. That's what Allah says. So be careful when you want to speak, understand you are honored by Allah, given a brain given language, you need to choose the best way of communicating what you have in your heart and your mind to the person you would like to get it across to. A lot of the times it's your family members. We use the F word, we use the B word, we use the Z word, we use the R word. We use so many words that we don't even know what they stand for. But at the same time, when it comes to the please and the thank you in Islam, you know, we say Jazakumullahu Khaira. We say beautiful supplications in place of thank you. We say, may Allah recompense you with goodness. Wow. Use these good words. Learn to appreciate people. Stop saying words that will hurt people's feelings, no matter who they are. Yes, sometimes some people feel bad, even if you word it in the best way. Then you're excused because it's their fault. But you do not intentionally choose the worst way of saying things in the house to your spouse, to your husband, your children, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, those who work for you. A lot of us are guilty of treating them worse than animals. The way we speak to those who work for us, not realizing some of them will be in the company of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whilst we are struggling to even make it through to Jannah. May Allah wake us up. Really, it's a reality. My brothers and sisters, honor those who work for you with such dignity that if they are not Muslim, within a short space of time, they see the beauty of Islam. The thing with us, even the Muslims don't want to work for us because they say these people, the way they'll treat you, the wife will come and swear from the morning to the evening. And this man thinks he's a big boss. He makes us work, etc., etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to save yourselves. From the punishment of the hereafter, you might have control over this person in this world, but you will never have control over them in the hereafter. They may be closer in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. Verse number 53, Allah says, an instruction. Oh Muhammad وسلم, instruct my worshippers to utter that which is the best. That's an instruction from Allah. When you open your mouth, say that which is the best. Think before you speak. It is an instruction of Allah and Allah tells you why. Imagine Allah didn't say, say that which is good. He would have said Hasan, Hasan meaning good. He said, Ahsan. Ahsan in the Arabic language means the best, that which is the best. So when you speak, say beautiful words, because the next part of the verse, 
Allah says, Shaytan indeed will create discord between you. You can easily misunderstand each other. Imagine you say, you start screaming and yelling at the end of, or at the top of your voice from the end of the house to your spouse or to someone who works and you are yelling and screaming. What do they think? They think you are angry. You are upset. You are hurt. You are disgracing them. You are degrading them. They have a heart. There is a now a black spot in their heart for who you after that again and again and again. What happens? There is hatred, enmity, jealousy. The house is broken. It's no longer a home. It's just a mere shelter. That's what it is. Many of us don't have a home. It's just a shelter. We just keep people. We just stay there, sleep there, abuse each other and carry on. Subhanallah, develop it into a home by developing your Iman and your character and conduct. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and save our homes. Beautiful. Let's move on to Surah Al-Kahf, a beautiful surah that we read on a Friday. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in it of the cave and he has named it after the cave. Do you know why? There was a group of young men who were so bothered about their closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were so concerned about the bad and the evil that was going on around them and the evil ruler that was there that was instructing them to do bad. And the situation was terrible. So they all sought refuge in a cave. They went into the cave seeking Allah's guidance, seeking Allah's obviously seeking Allah's goodness. And at the same time, asking Allah to protect them. What was their dua? These youngsters were trying to save themselves from the adverse environment. They went into the cave and they said, verse number 10 makes mention of it. فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِن لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً First thing, O oh our Rabb, have mercy on us. From you, we are asking for mercy. Ya Allah, brothers and sisters, seek the mercy of Allah. Ask Him, O oh Allah, bless us. O oh Allah, have mercy on me. Say it so many times in the day, your heart will soften. O oh Allah, have mercy on me. Your heart will soften. Subhanallah. If you are genuine and you are saying it, Allah will have mercy on you. And then they said, Oh Allah, prepare for us our affairs with goodness or in the right direction, etc. Oh Allah, protect us from the evil. Do you know what Allah says we did to them? As a result of their genuine dua and their effort that they made to be saved from the evil environment. Verse number 11 says, فَضَرَبْنَا عَلَىٰ آذَانِهِمْ فِي الْكَهْفِ سِنِينَ عَدَدًا We sealed their ears. We sealed their ears. They were made to sleep, but the sleep here is being referred to by the sealing of ears. Subhanallah. Allah says in that cave for many years, you and I know 309 years according to the Quran. So as a mercy, when they asked Allah to protect them from the evil environment, Allah blocked their ears and gave them sleep. I think we learned something from this. And that is brothers and sisters, sometimes what we hear can affect us and in a negative way. Sometimes what we listen to, the evil that we hear, it contaminates our hearts, our minds. You can think about what I'm saying. This is why I try not to listen to anything that is evil, bad, calling you towards immorality. Listen to that which is good. Listen to the Quran, listen to beautiful messages. Wallahi, they will impact on you. When you listen to the message of Allah, one of the signs that it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the verses are read, they pierce your heart. It feels like someone is talking to me. Yes, Allah is speaking to you. That's what it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us his mercy. Look at this. When the ears are sealed, you get a good sleep. If the ears were not sealed, any noise would have disturbed them. In this particular case, the noise didn't disturb them because their ears were sealed. They had a sound sleep. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of something. Many times we say, I want to do this tomorrow and in the future I will do this and the next day I'm going to do that and you know, I will do this and that. Allah says, wait. Always, whenever you are saying I'm going to do something in the future, you need to add a statement with that if you believe in Allah. What is that statement? Inshallah, if Allah wills. We will be here tomorrow, Inshallah. Because Allah can change that. My plan is to come here. Allah will probably allow that plan to happen, but it's in His hands. I don't know if He doesn't want that to happen. It won't. Something will stop it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So save yourselves from earning the anger of Allah or from 
having what you are planning to be done tomorrow, not done by saying, inshallah, then you will save yourself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 23, Surah Al-Kahf. وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ And do not say that you will be doing something tomorrow. Tomorrow here referring to the future. Except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, I'm sure we know the importance of this. But I want to draw your attention to one thing. When you are answering a question with the term insha'Allah, try to make sure that that answer is positive and not negative. Don't lie. Someone says, so will you come at nine o'clock? And you say, insha'Allah. Do you know what that means? That means, no, I won't. Astaghfirullah. Wake up, my brothers and sisters. You either say, no, I won't. I'm not planning to come, be honest. Or you say, insha'Allah, I will. The minute you have the right, you know, tone and the minute you have the right, for example, expression, people will know what you mean. So if someone says, will you come at nine o'clock and say, inshallah, I will. They know, yes, you are. But if you say, inshallah, I'll see, you know, inshallah, that means I won't come. There are so many Muslims who use the term inshallah, yet they are just telling a lie. They are saying, you know what? I don't want to come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us of a category of people who are reminded by the verses of Allah, but still they turn away. Don't do that. When you are reminded by the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take it in, understand, change, be affected by it. Even if there is a small change in you, change yourself. Even if it is one millimeter, change yourself. Because Allah says in verse number 57, and the, these words have been repeated in other places in the Quran. Who is there more oppressive than the one who is reminded of the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still turns away from them? They were reminded, they were told, but they've turned away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from among those. I want to end this evening's lesson, my brothers and sisters, with the last few verses of Surah Al-Kahf. They make mention of the qualities that will be needed. If you would like to meet with Allah in a good condition, you need to just do two things. And then you will meet with Allah in a very happy condition. What are they? Listen to the last verse of Surah Al-Kahf. Indeed, whoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to do good deeds and needs to save himself or herself from any form of association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is meant by good deeds? The Mufassireen, the people of Tafsir and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum have also explained that when Allah says amalan salihan, that means deeds that are acceptable. Acceptable deeds are those deeds taught to us by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a messenger. Messengers were sent in order to tell us who our Rabb is, to remind us to worship him and to show us how that Rabb wants to be worshipped. It was his duty. So he taught us Salah, he taught us so many other acts of worship, Zakah, he taught us Hajj, he taught us Saum and fasting. We cannot just decide on our own, you know, I'm a holy man, I'm going to start fasting one hour before everybody else and I'm going to end two hours later. Your fast is null and void. Did you know that? If you did that intentionally, your fast is not valid. That is something else. So don't think you are too holy by claiming that I am above everyone else. I'm going to make five units of prayer for the farad of dhuhr prayer, the afternoon prayer. It's not five units, it's four. Four rakat. You cannot just say, because I'm holy. It's not bad to fulfill extra salah, but when you want to fulfill extra prayer, there is a way of doing it. If you don't adopt that way, it's thrown back at you. So remember, these are the two conditions. You want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do deeds that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has taught and stay away from all forms of shirk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. May Allah grant us Jannah. May Allah make us from those whom 
We are happy when we meet Allah and Allah is happy when he meets with us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.